Five rounds in three weeks, nearly a month into the new season and almost 50 matches covered. Blazing through the rounds, Japan's best forge ahead. We won't miss a beat, bringing you all the highlights right here on the J1 League Goal Zone. Here's the menu for round six then, with four teams still unbeaten. Sagan Tosu welcomed promoted side Avispa to their fold and Semfreche travelled to Owita for their fixture. Leaders Kawasaki were on the road to Urawa, while the Antlers took on the perfect Nagoya Grampus. Gamba Osaka still on the sidelines, but should see a return to action in the next round. After a bright start to their campaign, Consodole seem to have fallen back into their old ways, unable to find a win since their opening game. A buoyant Kobe came to town after holding the champions to a draw, should fancy their chances at the Sapporo Dome? Let's see with Shazad Haq. Kaneko to Lucas. He's bearing down on goal. Cuts inside. Is that going to be a penalty? Surely it is. Lucas advancing in. That was clumsy. Big run up from Anderson. And he's put that away really well. And it is deserved, isn't it, that goal for Constantino de Sapporo, even if it is off a penalty. They have dominated this first half. They've had numerous opportunities. And they finally score. Lucas to take this. Is there one more goal, perhaps, before half-time? They're claiming a penalty. Oh, they've given it! And there's absolutely no arguing on this one either. Yamakawa doesn't say a word. Fukumori is down, and right before half time, another penalty is given. Here is Anderson. The penalty is going to happen. Will he score it again? Well, yes, he does. This time a little bit more central, but it's the same result for Anderson Lopez. They are looking very, very good at the moment. It's no mistake again. Here's Lucas. Oh, it's too easy! It's too easy! It's the hat-trick! Anderson Lopez right at the very start, 20 seconds in to the second half, and he makes it 3-0. What a nightmare! For Vissel Kobe. Yamaguchi, oh, what a great goal that is. Out of the blue, Yamaguchi slams that in. They just switched off for a minute there, didn't they? That's a fine shot from the skipper, and he needs to lead from the front. He said a goal now might make things a little interesting, perhaps. It's a short ball, and they can get goal number two here. Furuhashi. Well, that was very, very poor. And Nakano, who was the hero, really, in the previous game, has become a bit of a villain. I don't think you can really blame him here. That was a very, very poor back pass. Oh, it's a lovely ball through again. Keeper's got to be quick. This time it will be a penalty, though. Oh, he was too slow. And they have looked really, really bad at the back in the last 15 minutes. Kobe so shaky, particularly down that right-hand side. Flag stayed down, but there's no doubt about the challenge. Nailed on. He's done all that he has to do. Get the ball away from the keeper and wait for the contact. Pressure here on Furuhashi. He's already got a goal. Looking for a second of the game. And Kobe's third. And he makes no mistake. What a comeback this is from Vissel Kobe. 3 0 down. And they've dragged themselves right back into this. Three goals in 13 minutes. Forward. Let's see where he plays. Work from Sasaki. 
go for goal. Oh, Yamaguchi's got it in. He squeezed that in. Nakano, he got a hand onto it, but it wasn't enough. And the comeback is complete. Incredible from Kobe. This is it. We've got to go forward now. They've had the four minutes. Get the ball up the other end, and it's too late. Well, this has been an absolutely remarkable match and a superb turnaround from Viso Kobe. A remarkable result here. Final score, Hokkaido Consonole Sapporo 3, Viso Kobe 4. After a scrappy win at home for Tokyo in midweek, the capital side would be aiming for a more convincing encounter against the Galta, an opponent who were on a three-game losing streak. And Tokyo started well. Hotaka Nakamura with the knockdown in the 22nd minute. Hirotaka Mita stretching for that one, but recovered by the goalkeeper. Two minutes later, though, Vagalta took the lead. Koji Hachisuka heading home directly from the corner. The action was coming thick and fast. Only another couple of minutes had passed before Kyosuke Tagawa struck from just outside the box. And two minutes before the break, Tokyo took the lead. Diego Oliveira dancing around the defender and finishing smartly at the far post. Vigalta looking to equalize early in the second half. Yoshiki Matsushita's left-footed shot turned away by the goalkeeper, Suyoshi Kodama. Tokyo were looking to extend their lead. A Dialton putting the defense under pressure here, but skying his effort. And that Vergolta defence were feeling the pressure with 16 minutes to go. Jakub Slowik getting a little bit sloppy. Ryoma Watanabe unable to finish though. The home team take this one by two goals to one. With Danny Poyatos still unable to enter the country and his side still hunting for their first win in the top flight, Tokushima now faced a similarly winless Yokohama. With both teams in the relegation zone, this was a big opportunity to pick up three points. Yokohama provided the first threat of the contest. Strong run from Tatsuki Seiko, but he just sends his shot wide of the upright. The home side's only genuine chance of the first half came in the 42nd minute. Yokohama's Ryuji Sugimoto turning the ball into his own goal. But the equaliser came 13 minutes into the second half. Direct from the corner, Yutaro Hakamata rising very high to make it 1-1. But Vortis would secure the points in the 73rd minute. With the defence ball watching, Taisei Miyashiro ran through and clipped this one over the goalkeeper with his left foot. 2-1 the final score. Sagan's fantastic start to the season had all been based on their outstanding defending, a back line that had yet to concede a goal. Avispa were riding on two consecutive victories and would be eager to crack open that staunch defence. Awkward one for the Avispa goalkeeper Masaki Murukami in the 16th minute as Eduardo bends in that free kick with his left foot. And Murakami had to be alert again in the 35th minute as Nanase Ino took this one onto his left foot. And it was Ino who was involved in the outstanding play of the contest. Here in the second half, he volleys in this cross for Fuji Honda to send home. But Ino was ruled offside. This one ends 0 0. And that means Sargon registered their sixth consecutive clean sheet. Another undefeated team, San Frecce, arrived at the Shoadenko Dome looking to deal the hosts another blow after Awita had been handed their first loss by Cerezo in the previous round. Hisha's on hack. Kawabe. He gets across the net and Vieira hits the crossbar. Did well. And this is the best period they've had so far, Hiroshima. Much more movement. It's the kind of ball that you'd want the big man. He attacked it well.
Oh, that's a good save. Asano drawing that out of Takagi. I think at the end, you'd have to say fairly comfortable. Kobayashi. Miss out. It's a decent ball in! And he's got the header, Nagasawa. Opens a scoring in this match and gives Oita Trinita the lead. And the cross coming in from their marauding centre back in Misao. Just getting a touch on Asano. Loops over the keeper, it's made its way in. They've dragged themselves back into this. Aoyama, I think, has got that touch. We'll just confirm that. We loop that header over. It's a well-judged header, and I think he might be a little disappointed with that, Takagi. Oh, they have managed to squeeze it in. A late, late goal. The skipper has done it. They've worked so hard today, Oita Trinita. Would you believe it? At the end of this match, after all that graft, it was Imazu who's been lively in the second half, advancing forward. A nice little ball through. Oh, surely got to finish it now. Will they be unselfish? No need to be. Might as well just take it yourself. And that is the finishing touch for the substitute, Shun Ayukawa. The referee has seen enough, and Hiroshima found it hard going today against a plucky Moita Trinita. And Sanfetcha Hiroshima will be delighted with the three points here after a lot of hard work. Final score, it's Oita Trinita 1, Sanfrecce Hiroshima 3. Sanfrecce with a big away win to remain undefeated, but the only team in the league with the perfect start is up next. Let's see if they can keep that 100% record when we come back. You're watching the J1 League Goal Zone. We've already brought you the first hat-trick of the season, courtesy of Anderson Lopez at the Sapporo Dome. Another side likely to pile on the goals is up next, as we move to a fixture between two Kanto-based clubs. One could say that Urawa had been underwhelming under their new boss, Ricardo Rodriguez, managing just one win from their campaign so far. Kawasaki would be peeved to have had dropped points late in their previous game and would therefore be looking to make things right. Good defensive hassle and in the end the shot came in and Nishikawa had to dive to his left. And look how angry he is at his defence. They were closing down quite tightly on the edge of the box. There was a little bit of room there. As the ball just gets pushed to the side, this is the man with the room. It, it was an awkward hike for him, I must say. Yamanaka now bursting forward, looking for that left-footed cross. A couple of men in the middle on the edge of the box. That's a super save from Jung. We've seen two fine pieces of goalkeeping already. Kenyu Sugimoto really got hold of that. It was another shot that was at an awkward height. But once again, very well executed. You can see him make contact with that around hip height. Good effort from him to keep it low. Uga Jin's throw really wasn't good enough, and he's given away possession here. And there's a little bit of space on the right-hand side. Clipped into the penalty area. Oh, and it's in there! A pretty free header from eight yards out. It was a super ball played in. 
and the league leaders have gone a goal up with three minutes left. A lot of space out here for Kobayashi. Right footed. Looking and finds Leandro Damiao, who takes a touch on his chest and then brings in that right foot over his head for a 2 0 lead. And that really threatens to knock the stuffing out of the home side and their fans. And it was Kobayashi who would get his second assist, or rather, he, having scored the first, he gets an assist. And Leandro Damiao, expertise personified on the chest, one touch and then over his head, and that's 2 0. Wakizaka. Here he is again. Jao Schmidt plays a lovely through ball into the channel, and that's another one. And they've got 3 0 up. Two goals in the first five minutes. And it's Rio Hatate. He may have been the one to apply the finish, but it was all about that through ball from Jao Schmidt. Such an incisive ball. Sees the run, picks him out through the eye of a needle. Took four players out of contention with that pass. Marvellous little touch from Zhao. It's Kobayashi. One goal and one assist to his name already. On that far hand side. And it's another one, is it? Yes, it is. Damio got his head to it. But I think in the end it was Kobayashi who put the ball over the line. Be good to get a look at the replay. There's a possibility that it might have been an own goal, but I think probably Kobayashi. Ball clipped in. Damio heads back. Well, it was chested down by Kobayashi. I think the final touch did come from the defender, Iwanami, but it looked because that was on its way into the net anyway, that I think that will be ruled a goal rather than an own goal. So I think Kobayashi gets his second goal of the game. Nice little relay taken down on the chest with two men in the middle of the park. Damio on the edge of the box. Falls into a space where nobody was, but Damio picks up the loose ball. Left footed strike now, and it's a superb goal from Yasuto Wakizaka. How about that? The ball just fell to him, and with his left foot, he picked out the corner. Superb finish from him. It came off the defender. Wakizaka picked it up. And within an instant, turned and just let fly. That really is a thing of beauty, and there was nothing that Nishikawa could do about it. Diving away to his right, there's the frustration and the anger. And the referee, Junpei Ida, calls time on this one. And there's plenty of players who've worked hard out there, both on the winning and losing side. Final score then from the Saitama Stadium. Urala wins nil. Kawasaki Frontale, five. Cerezo delivered their third straight win after a hard-fought encounter in Oita. A trip now then to the coast of Sagami Bay should see them extend that streak with far less trouble as they face a shonen side with only one win to their name so far. Just seven minutes in and an early chance for Shonan. Yuki Ohashi meeting this one on the volley but sending it wide. Four minutes later, Ohashi would chance his arm again, this time from outside the penalty area. And at the other end of the field, seven minutes before the break, Yuta Toyakawa didn't really get hold of that shot, but it still almost rolled in. Ohashi's third big chance of the contest came in the first minute of the second half, this time straight at the goalkeeper. Three minutes later, Tatsuhiro Sakamoto with the cross. Or was it a shot? Shonan had their best chance to steal the points in the 54th minute, but their efforts were first of all saved, then blocked, and blocked again. This one finished 0 0. Kashima, another side yet to live up to the title of contenders this season, now face their toughest challenge. Nagoya, the only perfect team left in the mix, were looking to charge down the Antlers and continue their move upwards. 
In that march towards continuous perfection, Yuki Soma went close in the 25th minute. Six minutes into the second half, Yuta Matsumura gave the visitors a fright. Langerak diving to his right, saving well. But Nagoya took the lead just before the hour mark. Sho Inagaki's shot, moving through a crowded penalty area without any deflection and going in off the far post. And things didn't get much better for Kashima. Tomoya Inukai with his second yellow card, meaning that they've now had men sent off in two consecutive games. It was an extremely challenging game today. I think obviously, uh, simply with the conditions, it was very windy, very wet. Um, so it was an, uh, a big fight for both teams. Um, I had the feeling that it would only be one goal in it. And then thankfully, it was, uh, we, we got the goal and we could manage to win the game um, after a very challenging 90 minutes. A club that seemed to still be sorely missing their goal scoring machine, Kashiwa had found neither goals nor wins in their last three. A chance on the cards for a better showing then, as an erratic Shimitsu came to town. The visitors without a win since opening day, here's Mark Richmond. Four of his goals came off deliveries from Nishizawa, and he's attacking this one. Oh, the ball slipped into the back of the net, unbelievably. And Valdo, I believe it was, uh, got the last touch of the ball, was it? Uh, or was it Suzuki? That's a howler by Kim seong gyu the Korean goalkeeper. He's completely lost the ball and stooped down for it. Yeah, it is uh, Yoshinori Suzuki. And Kim seong gyu has got a lot of apologies to his teammates to make after conceding that goal very early on in this game. This is his 180th appearance for Shimizu S. Pulse. Magnificent control by... Nishizawa and a fabulous cross from him. Brilliant. Thiago Santana gets his second of the season and after soaking up all the pressure, when the skies have opened up and the rain has come down, Shimizu Espals find another way through goal. It all started with this subtle, fabulous touch from Nishizawa and then the cross of a lifetime then from Hara to spot Thiago in the middle. Clever the ball inside to Hosea, chance to take the shot on. That's the opportunity, and it's gone into the back of the net. Finally, they've scored, and it comes from the substitute, Yuta Kamiya. Set up by Hosoya. And finally, the duck is broken for Kashiwa Reso. 370 minutes without scoring in the J-League until that strike. Koga. Flipped it into the box, uh, Gonda came. Oh, it's uh, saved off the line. By Suzuki, almost an own goal. Honda, Gonda came for it and was uh, complaining to his defense the moment he called that he should have left it, but uh, they got involved and it almost dipped into the back of the net. But uh, Suzuki, who scored four minutes into the game, might have uh, saved and preserved that winning margin. Uh, it wasn't, it was Suzuki almost scored the own goal. teams who are struggling to score goals they certainly put up a display here a match laced with goals 2-1 the final score at the Sankyo Frontier Stadium an unbelievable comeback at the Sapporo Dome Kobe coming from three goals down to collect all three points Tokushima finally notching their first win of the campaign and Sanfrecce coming away with an impressive 3-1 win in Oita Kawasaki romping home with five goals at the Saitama Stadium, while Nagoya kept their perfect streak going with a 1-0 win over the Antlers. Just a point between the top two then, Grampus keeping the leaders honest with their sixth straight win and a game in hand. A tight race at the top with just a point separating each of the sides, it could all make for a dramatic fight for the title and Champions League qualification in the days to come. Looking quite dismal at the other end of the table, Yokohama the perfect opposite, with the worst defence in the league losing yet another match. Keeping them company at the bottom, Reisol and Sendai, not too far off with five straight losses. As the teams go on their international break, 
We'll see you in two weeks' time. Until then, my name's Steve Dawson. See you on the next edition of the J1 League Goal Zone.